Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and I am continuing with Final Fantasy 3 for the PSP. In so my last episode, we took out all of the final of the sub-bosses, and in this episode, we are going to reach the end of the main game. So as I mentioned a long time ago, back in part one of this series, this has been a long, long journey. And we are finally going to take on the final boss of the game, which is the Cloud of Darkness. Now there are a couple of different strategies you can use against this final boss. I will show you my strategy and then I'll talk a little bit about some of my other strategies. Now for my Dragoon here, I am going to equip a shield. They're not really going to be doing a lot of damage, they're going to be around kind of as a secondary character. Now the best shield is actually perhaps the Aegis Shield, simply because it gives you the most magic defense. But for now I'm going to have the Crystal Shield equipped for the area before the Cloud of Darkness in case we get any random encounters. I have everyone else in the back row, and that is because the final boss can do some physical attacks that can do a lot of damage. So my basic strategy with this party on the final boss is going to be to use the Requiem Sing ability from the Bard. That will do about one-tenth of the final boss's health in damage to all three parts of the boss, the Cloud of Darkness and its two tentacles. And then I'm going to be throwing shurikens with my ninja. I will be buffing up my characters and healing with my devout. And then my dragoon will be doing random things here and there. Attacking, healing with items, and doing a few other things in the battle. Now you can actually change out the dragoon for a second bard if you really want the battle to go quickly. And then have two bards sing with two lamia harps using requiem. And that'll actually take out the boss fairly quickly, in only a few rounds. But I feel that's a little bit cheap. I'm already using one bard, it's kind of cheap to use two of them. You also can change the dragoon into another ninja and chuck more shurikens at the boss. But shurikens cost quite a bit of money, and I do want to conserve my money for the optional boss that is in the secret dungeon for the post game. So the Cloud of Darkness is of course very confident here. It is going to flood our world with darkness and bring everything back to the void. But we're not going to let that happen. Not that we did much against you last time we took you on. You completely eradicated us. Apparently the Cloud of Darkness finds that humorous. While it's true we can't defeat you with just the power of light, fortunately we have the power of darkness as well. Guys? Or gals, I suppose. I don't know. They all look the same. I assume they're all men, but they might not be. So they're going to help us out by releasing their energy. And how are they going to do it? By kamikazing right into the cloud of darkness. We appreciate your sacrifice. But it does make me wonder if this is what happened except in the reverse the last time this occurred. So if the Heroes of Light did this, and that's why the Heroes of Dark were still around. But by doing that, the Warriors of the Dark have actually made the Cloud of Darkness vulnerable. So now we can actually damage it. And damage it we will to cut through its nearly 200,000 hit points. Here we go, final boss time. The awesome final boss music. So there are three parts to the final boss, the Cloud of Darkness and its two tentacles. The most dangerous of the tentacles is the right one. And by right I mean the upper one from this view. And that is mainly because all it does is cast defensive spells on the Cloud of Darkness, which can make the battle go quite a bit longer. Now the left tentacle, the one near the bottom, actually will cast lightning over and over on your party members. Depending on your levels and also your magic defense, that shouldn't be a major issue. Here is the power of Requiem. Look at that damage. Quite a bit. So our goal is to take out the tentacles before we actually take on the Cloud of Darkness. Now we don't have to do that, we could certainly just attack the Cloud of Darkness. But we do want to essentially reduce the amount of attacks the cloud is going to be doing. So by killing the tentacles, the cloud will be dropped down to just two attacks per round. 
Now in the early parts of this battle, it's going to just use physical attacks. So if your characters are in the back row, they're not going to take much damage. But as the battle progresses and as it gets lower in hit points, it's going to start using its particle beam ability, which is going to do a ton of damage to your party members. So this is why I like to have my party members up around 4,000 hit points. Now you certainly can take this boss on at much lower levels with lower hit points. In fact, speedruns generally do it around 2,000, a little bit under 2,000 hit points. And that's because they just spam using items with the item duplication glitches in some of the versions of the game that allow you to use things such as the turtle shell to essentially put up protective barriers on all your party members in one round. And then they use the Chocobo's Fury, or Wrath, to spam Flare on all of the parts of the Cloud of Darkness. But you can use a lot of different strategies for this boss. Especially if you've done the grinding, and again you have around 4,000 hit points like I do, you can try out different party combinations and see if anything else is something you enjoy. This is personally the party I like the most. So we're not taking a ton of damage here. You'll notice I didn't have to heal so far. This will be our first heal. What can be annoying with this boss is that it won't always attack in the same order that it does in the previous rounds. And that can get dangerous because in some parts of the battle later on, it might end the round by using Particle Beam, and then it might suddenly outspeed everybody in your party and use Particle Beam again and kill everybody. So if you have 3,000 or less hit points on your party members, that particular tactic can wipe you out, regardless of what you've done up to that point. Now if you're playing the PC version, that's not a huge deal because there are autosaves, and so we'll autosave before the boss. But if you're playing the PSP version, like I am, or the DS version, that is a problem because essentially you haven't been able to save and you're going to have to redo the entire Crystal Tower. Here comes Particle Beam. Ouch. Now again, with 4,000 hit points, it's not that bad. But if you're talking lower than that, that is a significant proportion of your health. And I really should have moved the shurikens up. I had them higher before, but I think I hit sort before this battle. And that moves them back down to lower on the list, putting all the weapons ahead of it. Now you notice that Requiem is doing less and less damage, and that is because, again, its damage is proportional as one of the tentacles goes down. And so as they get less hit points, as they're taking more and more damage, basically Requiem is going to do less damage because they don't have as much max hit points anymore with their current health. So we have one tentacle down, one to go, and then the cloud. And we're getting pretty lucky here. The cloud is still not doing particle beam every single round. And Bad Breath is nice to see simply because it just does not affect us. We have four ribbons equipped, so no ailments are going to affect us. Now, if you don't have ribbons for some reason, if you decided not to take on the Xandy clones, then you can also equip Aegis Shields. Not only for the magic defense boost, but also for the protection against ailments. See how much damage this does. Wow, one. <laughs> nice. Way to go, Ark. I'm not sure why that does so little. It's quite strange because he was doing multiple thousand to the other tentacle when he was attacking. Maybe he just missed a bunch of the attacks for some reason. All right, well, I think we're in the final stages here. I would say we probably have maybe three or four more rounds left. We're definitely under 100,000 left in the Cloud of Darkness. 
Yeah, so it has around 65,000 hit points left. So after that attack, probably closer to, you know, high 50s at this point. And still no Particle Beam. Well, haste isn't going to help because you're already hasted. So just waste your turns. That's fine. Now, even though the Cloud of Darkness is the final boss of the main game, it is not the most difficult boss in the game. That is the secret boss in the secret dungeon. And we'll be taking that on after we finish the game. We'll have to do quite a bit more level grinding to get up to a point where we can survive that boss's attacks. And then we will take it on in a bonus episode. Ooh, four damage. Nice. Are you gonna die? Thank you. Second tentacle down. Just the cloud left. And finally it's using particle beam. I don't know what's on its forehead. Is that a heart? Or an arrow? Some symbol for something. And of course it has some pretty wicked looking nails doing its claw physical attack. Coming out of, I assume, the void. So now it's down to just two attacks per round, so it'll probably keep doing particle beam and then one physical attack. Luckily, I think it's coded that it can't do two particle beams. That would be quite cruel. Because obviously that could immediately wipe out your party. I would imagine most people when they first play this game are going to probably be around level 55 at this point. And so they're going to have around 3,000 hit points. Which is why the final boss here can be pretty tough. But as long as you're prepared, it's not that big of a deal. Unless you're like me. Hey, it lost haste. And you do this entire sequence of the Crystal Tower, all of the sub-bosses, the final boss, and then you watch all of the credits, which takes about an hour and a half, <laughs> for me anyway, to go through the whole Crystal Tower and do all of those boss encounters. Watch the credits, and then your recording software decides to corrupt the file, and you lose the entire thing and have to redo the entire sequence, which yes, I had to do. But ah well, such are the sacrifices of doing walkthroughs. I'm gonna guess we're probably almost done. This is maybe gonna be the last round. Let's see how much Requiem does here. Okay, so it has about 18,000 hit points left. It's gonna take probably one more round. Next round should be it. And we can say goodbye to the Cloud of Darkness. We'll save the world one more time. And then we'll see what the credits have in store for us. Will there be an epilogue? We'll have to wait and see. Let's see if this is the final round. That is my guess. Simply because the ninja is going to do about 10,000 damage. So yeah, it has about 3,000 hit points left, so this'll be it. Boom! Down goes the boss. And in my next episode, we'll watch the credits and see what the end of the game has in store for us. Look at all that experience and money. So as always, viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I appreciate the continued support. And I will see you all next time as we watch the credits and start preparing for the post game. So long. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press like and leave a comment below. Please also subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell. See you next time.